This is Dusty Jones here to talk about how we can use logarithms to multiply and divide. John Napier uh, introduced logarithms in a book that he published in 1614. Now the modern definition of a logarithm says if a to the power x equals y, uh, then the logarithm base a of y is x. In common logarithms, the base is 10, and log y is the power of 10 uh, that would give us y. So since 10 squared is 100, we say the log of 100 is 2. Or since 10 to the 7th power is 10 million, we say the log of 10 million is 7. Napier's original definition had nothing to do with exponents, primarily because exponent notation uh, was not fully developed at the time. And originally Napier stated that the logarithm of 10 million was zero. The logarithm of 9,999,999 was one, and the logarithm of 9,999,998.0 9 uh, point and then six zeros and a one uh, was equal to two. In his setup, if we had uh, a proportion a over b is equal to c over d, if those numbers were related in terms of division, then the log of a minus the log of b was equal to the log of c minus the log of d. And using the numbers I've given here, you can see that um, these, this is a proportion of 9,998,999,998.6 zeros and a one over 9,999,999 is equal to 9,999,999 over 10 million. And uh, if you subtract their logarithms, 2 minus 1 is the same as 1 minus 0. Uh, the common logarithm development uh, came about when Henry Briggs talked with Napier, and together they decided it would be better uh, for the logarithm of 10 to be 1 instead of that 9 million thing and also the logarithm of 1 to be 0 instead of 10 million. Still, they had it set up so if you had um, the product of a times b is equal to the product of c and d, then the sum of those logarithms were also equal. And uh, just like Napier's original setup, if those quotients were equal, then the differences of the logarithms were equal. It was noticed that logarithms could be expressed as exponents, by John Wallace in 1685 and uh, Johann Bernoulli in 1694. To use logarithms in multiplication and division, um, if we have, for example, a is 10 to some power n and b is 10 to some power m, uh, we can say that the log of a is n and the log of b is m. And then a times b would be 10 to the sum of those m and n. So therefore the log of ab is equal to m plus n. In the same way when dividing, uh, we subtract the exponents. And so what we'll do is we'll use a logarithm table. I suggest you get yours out and uh, find these numbers a, m, b, n, and add or subtract accordingly to find a number that matches that logarithm value. Here are some examples. Um, to find 2 times 3, um, on the logarithm table at the right, we can find the log of 2.00 is 0 0.3010, and the log of 3 is this 0 0.4771. Since we're multiplying the numbers 2 and 3, we're going to add the logarithms. When we add those logarithms, you get 0 0.7781. So we look elsewhere on the table uh, to find something close to 0 0.7781, and oh, uh, we found 0.7782. Uh, and that's the logarithm of 6.00. So 2 times 3 is 6.00. Uh, we'll say approximately 6 because uh, for some reason that 77.82 is not exactly the 7781 that we were looking for. To multiply 2.31 times 2.5, again we look up the logs of 2.31, and that's here, 0.3636 and the log of 2.5, and that's 0.3979. We add those logs together to get 0.7615, and we look for something close to that, 
uh, which we find a 0.7612 here, that's the log of 5.77. So we say that 2.31 times 2.5 is approximately 5.77. If we want to find products of numbers that aren't on the log table, like 25 or 0.231, uh, both of these actually rely on this 2.31 and 2.5, and we just have to adjust by powers of 10. For 2.31 times 25, uh, we can break that 25 into 2.5 times 10, use the associative property to get its 5.77 times 10, or about 57.7. Similarly with 0.231, we can take that and say it's 2.31 times a tenth, use commutative and associative properties to find those numbers that we've already found, uh, and say it's 5.77 times one tenth, or 0.577. Here's another case. If we have 5.67 and 3.71, we look up their logs on the table and they are 0.7536 and 0.5694. When we add those together, we get a number that's larger than 1, 1.323. 1 the log table only has numbers up to 1. So what we do is we just take the decimal portion of that, 0.323, find it on the table, and it's here at 2.10. The 1 that we got in our sum of the logarithms means to now multiply this the 2.10 by 10 to the first power. So therefore, 5.67 times 3.71 is approximately 21.0. To divide. Uh, division involves looking up the logarithms in this example of 5.95 and 2.7, uh, which those logarithms are 0.7745 and 0.4314. We take the logarithm of the dividend and subtract the logarithm of the divisor and we get 0.3431. We look for a number close to that which is 0.3424 and that means that 5.95 divided by 27 is approximately 2.20. If we have other numbers that aren't on the log table like 59.5 or 270 we do the same sort of adjusting. Uh, for 59.5 divided by 2.7, we can break the 59.5 into 5.95 times 10, uh, and then say that's divided by 2.7. Use some properties, uh, commutative and associative, to end up getting 2.20 times 10, or 22. And in the same way, 5.95 divided by 270 is actually 5.95 divided by the product 2.7 times 100, which is the same as 5.95 divided by 2.7, now divided by 100, and ends up to be 0 0.0220. Sometimes you may subtract logarithms and get a negative answer, such as in 1.5 divided by 2.6. Uh, the logarithm of 1.5 is less than the logarithm of 2.6. And so when we take 1.761 minus 0 0.4150, we get negative 0.2389. There are no negatives on this table, so we'll add 1 here and then take care of it later. When we add 1 to that negative 0.2389, we get 0.7611. The number closest to that is 0.7612 on the table, or the logarithm of 5.77. Now we added 1 uh, to find this number, and to, to take care of that we'll now divide by 10 to the first power to undo that. And so we'll say that the qu we'll say that quotient is 0.577. The slide rule, which you may have heard of, which was the standard um, thing for many years before the invention of the calculator, uh, used logarithmic scales. These numbers 1 through 9 are not spaced as they would be on a number line, but they're spaced logarithmically. And so the length from 1 to 2 is actually log 2, and the length from 1 to 3 on this sliding part is actually log 3. And so placing them end to end gives us log 2 plus log 3, which we see is the same as log of 6, and so that's how we could use that uh, slide rule to multiply.